What's up guys, it's Brandon over at Old Anvil Speed Shop. Uh, it's been a while since we've done a build update on our 62 Impala SEMA project. So today we're gonna take you through, kind of show you what's been done and uh, just give you a little update on what we've been up to. Now, the last time you guys saw this car, it was up on one of our frame tables, uh, braced to the table, and we had just started stripping it down, started doing some little bit of rust repair on the outside, in the quarters, and things like that. Uh, now, since then, a lot has changed. Um, for starters, we cut all the factory floors out of this car. Uh, once that was all out of the way, Paul came out here and took some dimensions uh, off of the body and started designing our chassis. So with a couple weeks of chassis fab, uh, we had a roller. Uh, once we got to that point, we went ahead and cut all the braces off of the lower half of the body that braced it to the frame table. And we actually lifted the body up into the air and slid our chassis right underneath the, the car. Double checked our measurements, made sure it was sitting exactly where we wanted it to sit. And uh, from there, we started actually just welding it directly into the original inner rocker panels. Um, so what's really cool about this car is we've actually turned it into a unibody uh, rather than a body and chassis car. Um, in terms of building floors and things like that, it really simplifies everything because it's all nice and flat. So before we put the chassis under the car, uh, while it was still on the frame table, I actually went ahead and started doing all my floor layout uh, basically from these front rails up here all the way to the tail end and anything that we knew was going to fit inside the body I went ahead and just started laying all that out and making those pieces just to kind of get a jump on it before we put it in the car. Now fast forward to it being in the car uh, I've come in here and actually spot welded everything in got rid of all the Clecos um, and then the original seats that we are using uh, we're going to change them up a little bit and reupholster them and things like that. But we did want to use the factory frames and the factory slides. Um, but because the floors are different, I had to cut all the mounts out and make new ones. So what we've actually done with the front seats in this car is we've lowered them down just a little bit. Uh, the owner of the car is a little bit taller. So we wanted to give him a little more headroom in the car be a little bit more comfortable. And we've actually kicked them back just a tad from the factory location as well. Just again, for that comfort level and the added space for him. Now to go into a little bit more depth on these floors that were built, um, they look pretty simple, um, but they are extremely strong, which is amazing. Um, and basically it's two main sections. We've got a front and a rear. And one of the reasons we did that was because we wanted to make sure that we put a rear footwell in here. So because we moved the original seats back just a little bit, it kind of tightened up on that rear legroom uh, area. So we put some footwells in there just to add a little extra space for whoever's sitting in the back seat, uh, make them a little bit more comfortable. Um, and then under these floors, uh, there's actually four braces under the front set. Uh, they're just pretty simple top hat style braces. Um, and they run from frame rail to frame rail and they just follow all the way down. There's uh, one here and one here, uh, basically both running under the new seat mounts. And then there's two up front, kind of where your feet would go, or, or uh, if you stand in the car, kind of when you go to sit down in it. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that that was extremely strong. Um, another thing we did while the floors were out before they got spot welded in was I added some bead roll details uh, with our Pullmax machine. Um, it's just another thing that adds a little bit of extra strength and just gives it a nice look um, before we lay carpet down and boom mat or whatever we end up using. Um, another thing to mention too on these floors is every point that overlaps, uh, we've actually stepped them all down. So with this front piece, it slides up under this one and it has an angle to it. So it steps down under this lip and then angles on this lip as well, and then gets spot welded on both sides. So essentially you're making a brace out of your floors, which is pretty simple, uh, 
and it just adds a lot of strength, which is really nice. Um, so we will come back in here and these upper corners here, we'll weld those out on all four on this side, all four on that side, and then these inner seams, they'll all just get seam sealed, make sure everything's good to go before any carpet goes down or anything like that. Um, another thing worth mentioning is up here into our lower half of our firewall, uh, we don't have a motor and trans in here yet, so I've made pieces to come in here that match up to the floor and the firewall. Uh, again, just matching that beaded detail so it all flows. Um, and then we went ahead and left them long on both sides. That way when we do put the motor and trans in for mock-up, we've got a little extra real estate to work with. Um, that way we can just kind of trim down to size to fit and then we'll make a doghouse for the trans and a trans tunnel in here and get that all done. Um, another thing as we're moving back to the back of this car, I know it's been talked about before, we are putting some big tires back here. So we've got these massive tubs. Um, we weren't totally sure at first how big of a back seat we were gonna get in this car. Uh, and it ended up actually working out really well. So the rear structure where the back seat comes and kind of just like clicks into, uh, we actually saved that piece. And when we had our temporary bracing in here, we had made some tabs just uh, to mimic where the factory had it and we had those clecoed in as well. So once everything was in the car and the floors were in, we took those pieces and put them back in here and just chopped them to fit in between these rear tubs and then started test fitting our rear seat. And what we ended up actually coming up with, and it was super simple, was we just trimmed it away until it fit the tubs. So because we're reupholstering everything, uh, a lot of the springs and things that were in this factory seat frame, we'll be getting rid of and it'll be transferred over to just like some nice foam. It'll be a lot more comfortable. You won't have this real springy feel to them. Um, but by doing that, it's allowed us to keep the, the uh, factory sized rear seat, which is awesome because the owner has a few kids and he wants to make sure they fit back here. Now on these rear tubs, uh, to get the right diameter, uh, we took the dimensions of the tire and we added three inches to it to make sure that there was plenty of clearance when the car is sitting on the ground. Uh, we cut away basically everything that was in the way. So all of the factory trunk hinge structure and things like that, that was all cut out. Once we had the tubs fitted up in here, we took and basically welded them back to the factory structure. Um, all the housing that the factory convertible top sat in. So once that was all welded out, we came in and welded out up into this structure as well. Uh, we did have to cut into this structure about an inch and a half worth to get the car to sit as low as we'd like to. We are keeping the factory convertible top and all, the, all that mechanism. It will function, it will work, it will sit how it should. Um, so that is staying. A lot of people were unsure that with the big tubs, if that was gonna work or not, it will work. Um, so we, we were very thankful that that worked out in our favor. Uh, and then on this backside, you can see here, we've added in a structure just to tie that tub in to this rear catwalk right here. So that was done. Uh, while we were back here, we went ahead and shaved the factory lead seams. So just made some filler panels, got those shaved and welded in. Um, and then if you look back here, what's gonna end up happening is we're gonna mount our new hinges. So it'll be a Impala style hinge and we'll just be relocating it inward uh, to fit with these tubs. So they just took up a lot of space and we needed the room. So we'll, uh, we'll make the accommodations to make that work. Um, and another, another thing that's worth mentioning too is these tubs are basically as high as they could go before having to cut into the quarter panel, which obviously we were not gonna do. So we used as much space as we could and uh, got as much out of it as we did. So we're super happy with that. Uh, when this car's on the ground, we should be, you know, it, it won't quite lay frame, we'll be maybe two inches off the ground in the rear. So the owner was happy with that, we're happy with that, and we're excited to see how that goes. So we'll keep going back this way to the back of the car, uh, the trunk area. Same thing, we've got our floors in here. Everything back here is just clecoed in place. Uh, we've just started to kind of figure out where we want our batteries and where we want our air compressors and things like that. Um, so on this particular car, we are gonna run dual batteries. Uh, we're also gonna run dual air compressors and we're gonna have a pretty rad uh, tank from Airlift that's gonna sit up in here and we'll make some nice mounts for it and uh, that'll all be open. We'll probably do some hard line work and and just make everything real nice and clean and tidy. And then as far as these, both of these sides go, once everything's fit, 
uh, we'll actually make some inner, panel, inner panels to hide all this um, and get those in there and get that done. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Now we just had one more very important piece to the puzzle show up and we're gonna take you down there and show you. So our absolutely gorgeous motor from Nelson Racing Engines is here. Uh, it is a 427 dart block. Uh, this thing's got a Whipple on it right now. We are gonna switch it over to a Kong blower instead. Um, just, we'll drop the height just a little bit, uh, make it a little bit easier in terms of fitment under the hood, things like that. Uh, we do plan on doing a little bit of sheet metal work on the hood, adding maybe a little bit of a cowl or something like that. We haven't quite worked that out yet, but once it's in the car, we'll, uh, we'll figure out all those details. So early this next week, we're gonna work on getting this motor and trans in here, get everything mocked up, get our sheet metal wrapped up, get the front clip back on here, all of that good stuff. In the meantime, to hold you over until the next update, go check out our full chassis build. Uh, we got Paul out here, went through all the geometry of the suspension, all that design, why it was designed the way it was, and all the parts that we used and why we used them. And uh, until then, that's about it.